So once 2020 is finally at long last over, I think we'll all remember it for one thing and one thing only. The fact that pretty much every bloody smartphone was a near 7 inch beast. I mean seriously, forget deadly viruses and killer locusts and racial injustices and the fact that the world is literally on fire. These phones just need to stop being so f***ing massive. I mean seriously, if you've got tiny little pixie hands like me, 2020 has not been a kind year. So rather bizarrely, one of the unsung heroes of the past year is actually Apple who've launched not just one but two compact smartphones in the last 12 months starting with the iPhone SE 2020. And yeah that phone was basically hot garbage thanks to the dreadful battery life but amends have now been made with this charming wee bugger here, the iPhone 12 mini. The mini is the most affordable of Apple's new iPhone 12 family, emptying your wallet to the tune of 699 quid if you don't want to beef up the storage. And like Sony's old Xperia compact phones, you get a dinky form factor but pretty much the same specs as that standard iPhone 12. Now I've already fully reviewed the original iPhone 12 but I've had my sim slapped inside the mini model for the last few days and here's my full in-depth iPhone 12 mini review. And a big thanks to Sky Mobile for sending this review sample in. You can go check out their Black Friday deals which are live right now. So the original iPhone 12 served up one of the smaller smartphone screens of 2020 at just 6.1 inches but the handset itself didn't feel compact at all thanks to those fat bezels and the cumbersome old school brick-like design. Seriously this thing was about as comfortable to clutch as a red hot pineapple covered in hedgehogs and about as easy to use one handed as well. But here on the iPhone 12 mini that display shrinks down even further to a rather teensy 5.4 inches and you know what? This mini mobile despite rocking that same slab like design is an absolute marvel for stubby fingered morphos like me. The mini weighs just 133 grams which suits the size perfectly while one handed use is an absolute breeze. And despite the sharp edges and chunky finish I didn't find this diminutive iPhone uncomfortable to wield. And thankfully you get that same fantastic ceramic shield display as found on the original iPhone 12 right here on the mini and once again it rebuffs scratches and nicks like an absolute hero. And the glass back and aluminium edges are proper tough too. So far the mini's only scar is a pinhead sized chip on one edge and that is it. Plus you get the same IP68 water and dust resistance so no worries if your mini gets moist so to speak. And sure the iPhone 12 family isn't exactly hot competition for the Kardashians when it comes to lux but I do really like that moody blue finish around back and you do have more vibrant choices on offer as well if you want to brighten up your 2020 somewhat. Now if only Apple could stick a fingerprint sensor on those huge flat chunky edges which are you know kind of perfectly designed for a fingerprint sensor then we'd be all set. So I already dove into the software side of things in my full iPhone 12 review and the iOS 14 experience here on this stinky weed bugger is exactly the same, foibles and all. So on the rough side of things iOS still lacks a lot of key features that I've gotten used to over the years like an always on display and proper gesture navigation while a lot of apps simply don't perform as well here on iOS as they do on Android. Be it Skype not bothering to actually notify me when people are calling until I've already hung up or Deezer refusing to download songs in the background or WhatsApp just locking up occasionally for the hell of it. But on the flip side the actual OS behaved itself wonderfully the entire time. There were no weird hang ups or quirks to speak of. You've got all those great Apple security features, you've got the cross device support for Macs and other Apple bits and it will be interesting to see how MagSafe really grows and evolves over the coming months and years. Plus with Apple in control of both of the hardware and the software you should rest assured that the iPhone 12 mini will stay up to date for the coming years, certainly longer than most Androids. And hey any Fortnite lovers out there can now once again enjoy their favourite game on their iPhone now that Nvidia has sorted out the GeForce Now service via Safari. Happy days! Like the rest of the iPhone 12 crowd you get an OLED screen slapped onto the mini boasting strong brightness levels, sharp contrast and fine detail and thanks to the Full HD Plus resolution. As usual with Apple displays colour reproduction appears perfectly realistic so photos look natural and vibrant subjects really shine. Of course such a teeny panel isn't ideal for watching videos for long periods. This blower is definitely best suited to quick bursts on YouTube or enjoying a short show on Netflix. And that is a problem that's compounded with the comedically massive Henry Cavill moustache notch which frankly what were they thinking? And I also found that smaller app icons and web links were quite tricky to tap here on the iPhone 12 mini's reduced display as well so that a lot of apps are not optimised for 
the screens this size anymore so if you've got two icons close by you can quite easily tap the wrong one and I often did. So while one-handed use is an absolute breeze unfortunately the usability is hampered somewhat by that small stature of the iPhone 12 mini. And yeah the lack of even a now pretty basic 90 hertz refresh rate on a premium smartphone like this is frankly ludicrous making navigation through apps and menus and the like feel rather rough and stuttery compared with a lot of rivals. However besides the lack of a headphone jack there's nothing to complain about on the audio side. You've got a well-balanced stereo speaker setup which can blast out some serious sound. Plus the Bluetooth chops prove perfectly reliable as well. No stuttery breakups or anything like that to speak of whether it's streaming to headphones, speakers, whatever. Although unfortunately as usual Apple has been rather miserly on the storage front. You only get 64 gigs packed into the base model which again for 699 is pretty pathetic. And of course there's no memory card expandability here either so you'll definitely want to upgrade from 64 to at least 128 gigs if you want to carry around a lot of apps and media or shoot a lot of 4k video with that camera tech because once you've made your choice you're stuck with it. There's not much point in lingering on performance because the iPhone 12 mini rocks that same beefcake A14 platform as the rest of the fam plus 4 gigs of RAM like the vanilla iPhone 12. Gaming is smooth and satisfying despite that aforementioned affront of a notch while skimming three other apps is just as slick. However, although the high touch response rate means pretty much zero lag while you're gaming, I'd highly recommend using a gamepad if possible, just to avoid covering half of that dinky display with your thumbs, and also prevent any cramp after longer super violent sessions. You've also got, of course, full support for 5G here on the iPhone 12 mini as Apple was shouting from the rooftops during the launch, and it's full millimeter wave support over in the US as well, where you've actually got that tech rolling out. Here in the UK, that has actually been stripped out of the iPhone 12 mini because we just use Sub 6. And as for battery life, well, thank the baby Jesus, the iPhone 12 mini is definitely an improvement on the crappy old iPhone SE 2020 in that regard. I found that the iPhone 12 mini was still running rather close to dry come the end of a really busy day, but usually I was tucked up with Teddy with a little bit of juice left in the tank, unless I went absolutely nuts with like the camera or something like that. However, the wireless charging support is slow as balls, so you're only going to really want to do that if you're going to slap the iPhone 12 mini onto a charging pad all night long. And last up, let's have a squint at that dual camera setup around back which is the exact same hardware here on the iPhone 12 mini as those sensors slapped onto the standard iPhone. And you get the exact same camera experience here on the mini as well so basically point and shoot you don't need any brains to get a decent looking photo. That primary sensor combined with Apple's behind the scenes process and once again means you'll get some very sexy looking shots in pretty much any conditions going. Colours are naturally captured even when you're snapping indoors or up against a bright sky while detail levels remain strong when those photos are blown right up. That night mode still activates automatically although you can tinker with it to a small degree and while Apple's take isn't as impressive as Huawei's or Google's you'll still find you get stronger detail, less grain and fairly natural looking colours. And then there's that ultra wide angle lens which can be swapped to at any time with just a quick tap and this performs in a very similar fashion to that primary shooter although the colour reproduction is often a bit warmer. And on the video front you can now shoot Dolby Vision home footage which is great if you want shit hot looking home movies movies of your wee tag picking their nostrils and then consuming the crusty delights discovered within. 4K clips look great on your teddy box thanks to the fine detail and, and those natural looking colours, complete with very respectable image stabilisation. And yeah, you can swap between the two lenses when needed. Audio pickup is strong too, as long as you want filming in gale force winds. And finally, if you flip to the front, you've got a 12 megapixel selfie snapper, which also does a fine job, capturing natural looking skin tones even when you're trying to grab a snap against a proper bright background. Those portrait smarts are back in action and you can even grab a decent-ish pick when you're in a low light conditions. So after the distinctly flawed, let's face it frankly pants iPhone SE 2020, Apple has definitely made amends and crafted a very worthy mini handset. That said however, the iPhone 12 mini is of course considerably more expensive than Google's Pixel 5 flagship form which also has the superior 90 hertz display without a ridiculous massive moustache notch. And sure on the flip side the iPhone 12 mini is more powerful than the Pixel 5 although to be fair on Google's flagship I still happily play the likes of Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG on those top detail settings with a perfect frame rate so are you going to even notice that extra power? And let's face it for the majority of people it's going to come down to what do you like more iOS or Android but it'd be great to hear you guys thoughts as well definitely if you've been rocking the iPhone 12 mini please do leave your reviews down in the comments below and poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!